Hello, in this lesson, I'm gonna tell you about voltage and how we apply that concept to electric circuits. You may have heard of cells or more likely batteries. Um, I'm sure you've bought some at some point for, some, for one device or another. Um, these are, these are uh, devices which transform chemical potential energy into electrical energy. A battery is actually just a collection of two or more cells, and quite often people confuse it to use It looks a little bit I like using the image of Duracells in, in my uh, in in my notes, uh, it's not because I own stock in the company or anything, but because the positive terminal, if you remember the, if you remember a battery or a cell actually has a positive terminal and a negative terminal. Um, and for a Duracell battery, the gold end is the positive terminal. So that's a nice visual way to know where the positive terminal is. When we uh, when we represent a cell or a battery, in an electric circuit, we do so diagrammatically. That is to say that we don't actually draw a picture of what it looks like, but we use these two vertical lines to represent uh, where the cell is in the circuit. So you can see there above the, above the picture of the battery, I have the two vertical lines, and one of the vertical lines is longer than the other. And so that longer vertical line is always the positive terminal. So Keep that in mind when we get to circuits. The positive, the longer vertical line is always the positive terminal. So cells have come a long way since they were first developed. The image on the left is a, a, a zinc, a zinc copper wet cell, sometimes called a galvanic cell. And uh, they're actually quite interesting to make, although um, you can, yeah, getting getting all the parts is usually pretty easy. Um, the tricky thing about them is you do need some uh, you do need some acidic solutions, but you can actually make something. You can make something reasonable up just using lemon juice. Uh, I remember when I was when I was younger, when I was in elementary school, I made one of these just as a science project, and it was pretty fun. Um, a bit of a mess though. <laughs> uh, I think I actually have a couple still in my garage. Oh, that's funny. Anyway, um, the diagram on the right, or the picture on the right, is actually a cutaway view of a um, a cutaway view of a cell. And so this is how they look nowadays. And if you ever cut a cell open, or you cut a battery open, uh, which is a little dangerous. So if you're if you're going to do it, um, you know you need to. Make sure that you know what you're doing or, or do it with someone who knows what they're doing. It might be easier or it might be better. It might be safer to just look up a video online because uh, there are a few. But it's quite interesting, actually, because the inside of a, of a, of a, a dry cell is uh, kind of like this paste. Um, so it, and it can be, uh, anyway, it's, it's, a little, it's a little interesting to play around with. But um, yeah, so... I want to point out that in the in the diagram on the right, the current, as it's drawn, is well. What do you think? Is it conventional current or is it electron flow? Again, remember which of the which of the ends is the positive terminal? This is the positive terminal, right? This little nub sticking out here. If it's not a Duracell and you can't tell from the color, the positive terminal is always the one with, with this little nub sticking out. This side doesn't have a little nub. So that's the positive terminal. So is this picture representing conventional current or electron flow? It's electron flow because the current is actually leaving from the negative terminal, going through the circuit and go, going into the positive terminal. And so that's, uh, that's electron flow. Okay, just a bit of a recap there. When we did in back in the third unit of study, the, the the unit on energy and society, we talked about gravitational potential energy. And one 
kind of subtle thing that I that I didn't really have time to mention there is that gravitational potential energy. Uh, you don't you don't just say that when you say that something has gravitational potential energy, you're actually saying that it has gravitational potential energy with respect to some reference. And usually that's the ground, right? So wherever the ground is, that's your zero. And then anything above that, you have gravitational potential energy. But really what you care about is you care about the difference in height, and that gives you the difference in gravitational potential energy. Electric potential energy, electric potential um, works much the same way. We care about the difference. We care about the difference in what's happening. We don't we don't talk about necessarily the absolute uh, electric potential. So this is a little bit tricky, but um, to, this could be a little tricky to wrap your head around, but in practice, it's actually pretty straightforward. So the idea is that as we have our circuit, and as we have current going through the circuit, uh, that charge that's moving will actually lose energy. It'll interact with different elements, for example, resistors, and those resistors will act much in the same way as, you know, something moving through air. Air will, you know, have air resistance, and it will basically um, make the object lose energy. Um, um, so, so, so I don't necessarily care about um, where what the potential is at a certain point in the circuit, you're always looking at the potential difference. And that potential difference is known as the voltage, okay? So you may have heard that term before when you talked about circuits. It's the voltage that we care about, and that's the difference in potential energy. How much work do we have to do in order to get our charge from one spot to another? So this gives us a nice little definition. Voltage is equal to the work uh, the, the work required per unit charge, right? So work or the change in energy, the change in uh, <clears throat> the change in electric energy from you know one spot to another. Okay. So this is the definition of voltage. How much work is done to move a certain amount of charge from one place to another? Um, so in terms of units, voltage is measured in volts, which is a little unfortunate because those two things are so similar. Uh, work and energy are measured in joules, right? Always measured in joules. And charge, if we remember from last time, is measured in coulombs. Okay, so the definition of a volt, it's, it's again, it's one of these derived units. It's not a base unit, it's a derived unit. One volt is equal to one joule per coulomb. Okay. All right, so the concept of vol voltage can be a little tricky just to talk about it in that respect, but now we're going to apply it to the concept of electric circuits, in which case voltage is very important. Um, at least you need to be able to understand how to use it. So when, so when we talk about electric circuits, there are two devices that we're going to use pretty frequently. The first one we use to measure current, and that's known as an ammeter. So remember that current is measured in amps. And our ammeter basically sits in this within the circuit. Has to, technically speaking, has to sit um, in series with the rest of the circuit, so that whatever current is flowing through, through through the circuit will also pass through the ammeter. So if you look at this little diagram here, oops. If you so if you look at this diagram here, you can see that I have my cell. Actually, I'm just going to call it a battery because I don't know if it's a cell or a battery. And I'm, I think battery is the more common word for you. So I have my battery. In a series circuit, the current only has one way to go. There's only one path. So in that case, the current is the same everywhere in the circuit. So if you think about current kind of like water, water, if there's just one stream, the amount of water in the stream is always going to be the same no matter where you are in the stream. And it's the same thing with the current. So if you were ever to wire up two lamps to a battery, you would, uh, in series, you would do it this way. You would connect your positive terminal to one of the terminals of the light bulb, connect the other terminal of the light bulb to one of the, to one of the terminals on the other light bulb, and then back again. <clears throat> to your battery. Diagrammatically, it looks like this. So again, here's my positive terminal. 
the current will go this way down through this through this light bulb over here through this light bulb and then back again so there's the key is there's only one path it doesn't branch anywhere this gives us um, this gives us our first law specifically Kirchhoff's current law for series circuits and this is it this just says that the current in the circuit that's i0 is the current in the circuit is equal to the current measured after any of the elements so in this circuit we start off here our current goes this way we measure two amps so this is the current in the circuit right the current you measure to find the current in the circuit you measure uh, directly after the battery and then that and then the current goes this way goes through the lamp we measure after the lamp we still have two amps goes through the other lamp we measure after that second lamp we still have two amps so everywhere the current is the same i0 is the same as i1 is the same as i2 there is no i3 in this case okay different story for when we look at parallel circuits because parallel circuits the current has more than one path to take and essentially again if you think about it the the total amount of current that comes out of the battery is going to split up going down each of those different branches but then it has to reconnect before it goes back into the battery so in this uh, again in this picture we have our positive terminal connected up to both right the positive terminal is connected up to both of the lamps and our negative terminal is also connected up to both of the lamps. So this, this could be a little confusing if you need to wire this up in, in reality, but it, diagrammatically, it's pretty straightforward. Looks like this. From our positive terminal, we're connected. Our positive terminal basically sees both lamps. So here is the first branch. Here is the second branch. And then from those lamps, we go back to the negative terminal. So this branch goes here, and this branch reconnects in here, okay? So there are two branches in this case. So Kirchhoff's current law for parallel circuits goes like this. The total current in the circuit is equal to the sum of all the currents in the branches. So here I have my battery. I measure two amps coming out of the battery. I go down the first branch. I measure one amp. Uh, on that first branch, right after the after the light bulb, I measure one amp on that branch. I go down the other branch and measure one amp down the other branch. So one amp plus one amp is in is two amps. So this is I zero, this is I one, this is I two. And then when the two branches reconnect, I measure the current again just to make sure that nothing weird has happened. And again, I get uh, I get two amps. So technically, this is also I zero, right? You can measure you can measure I zero on either side of the battery. It'll be the same. It should be the same. Okay, so let's apply Kirchhoff's laws to a couple of situations. So in this first one, we, the first thing that we need the first thing that you need to do is look at the circuit and decide is it a series circuit or is it a parallel circuit. So I hope that if you look at this one, you'll decide that it's a series circuit, right? Because there's only one branch. There's only one path for the current to take. Coming out of the battery, okay. coming out of the battery through resistor one, through resistor two, and then through resistor three. So the current sees all three resistors, all right? So it says that the, the, the current, if we measure the current here, we would have four amps. So that means that the current in the current through resistor one, resistor two, and resistor three is also going to be four amps because there's no opportunity for it to branch anywhere. So all of these are four amps. That was pretty that was pretty easy. For question one B, we have a parallel circuit. <laughs> so in the parallel circuit, we're it, it says that we have a, a current of four amps. That is four amps coming from the battery. And so that's going to be our budget, and we can't go over that as we go through our three branches. The current in the first branch is 1.5 amps. The current in the second branch is 2.0 amps. So already, from our budget of 4 amps, we've used 3.5 amps. 
and that means that whatever is in the third branch is going to be whatever's left. So that's the deal there. All right, so that's basically dealing with current, both in the case of a series circuit and a parallel circuit. And I hope you'll agree that that's not too, too bad. Next up, we're going to measure voltage. And to do this, use a device called a voltmeter, which looks like that. Most of the time, a voltmeter and an ammeter is actually the same device. It's just a matter of you you switch which, um, which uh, mode you want to be in when you measure something. But in the, in the lab that you're doing this week, there are actually two separate devices. OK. So in this uh, diagram, we have our battery. And the current will go this way. And it's actually, although it may look like it's somehow parallel, I guess technically it is. But as far as the actual circuit itself goes, it's just a series. I have a battery that we have the battery, the current goes down through the resistor, and then through the ammeter. So the ammeter is going to tell us what our current is. But the volt the voltmeter is placed such a way so that the two probes, there's usually one red one and one black one, the two probes are placed on either side of the resistor because we want to know what the voltage or voltage drop is through this resistor. Okay, so we have to measure on either side of the resistor to see what the potential difference is um, on the two sides of the resistor. So technically speaking, the, the, uh, the voltmeter is in parallel with this resistor, but this thing, um, not, this thing has such a high resistance that almost no current goes through it. Okay, so this leads us to Kirchhoff's voltage law for series circuits. And you can see that this actually looks kind of similar to, um, to one of the Kirchhoff current laws. So this one says that the total voltage from the battery is equal to the sum of all the voltages through the different elements in the battery. So again, we have a series circuit, right? Our battery in this case is providing three volts. Sorry, I should go this way. Our battery is providing three volts, and as we go through the circuit, the first lamp has a potential, uh, has a voltage of one volt, and our second lamp, which is in series, has a potential of two volts. So one volt plus two volts is three volts. Okay, that's Kirchhoff's voltage law uh, for series. In a parallel circuit, different scenario. The voltage that our that our battery provides is going to be the same along each of the branches. Okay, so in this case, our battery is providing three volts. And if we go down this branch, we have three volts across this uh, lamp. And we, uh, if we go down this branch, we have three volts across this branch. So all of the branches have three volts. All right, so let's try and look at a couple of problems where we uh, have to apply, again, we're going to have to decide, is it a series circuit, is it a parallel circuit? And we're going to have to decide, how do we know what the what the current is in certain places because it's missing? And how do we know, it, or can we decide, can we do it, figure out what the voltage is in certain places? Okay. So first of all, we're looking at this one. And it kind of looks complicated, but again, remember that these little these little bits here are just uh, the voltmeter telling us what the voltage is. This isn't actually part of the circuit per se. So all we have here is a series. We have our battery, and the current comes down here, through this resistor, through this resistor, and then back to the battery again. Okay, so this is a series circuit. So what do we know about this series circuit? Well, we're told here that our battery is providing six volts. Fine. And our current out of the battery is four amps. Great. Now we go down here to the first resistor, right? This would be R1. And we measure the voltage across R1, this is V1, is one volt. So one volt, we've used one volt already on that first resistor. How many volts does the second resistor use? Hmm. Well, my budget is six volts. I use up one volt. That means that this one has five volts. 
because I have to use my whole budget. Okay, the second thing is the current. The current here is four amps. And because it's a series, there's no branching. There's no branching, so that means that the current after the first resistor will be four amps, and the current after the second resistor will be four amps. So everywhere, four amps. For question 2b, you can see that we have a parallel circuit. And in this parallel circuit, we have, well, let's start with the, let's start with the voltage. So in the case of a parallel circuit, the battery is delivering six, six volts in this case. And so Kirchhoff's law says that there will be six volts down the first branch and six volts down the second branch. So that means both resistors see six volts. Turning to the current, four volts are coming out of the battery. And down the first branch, you see that 1.5 amps are used. And so down the second branch, that leaves 2.5 amps. So four amps from the battery, 1.5 amps goes in the first branch, 2.5 um, amps goes in the second branch. So there's the answers. Okay, so just to make sure that you've got this, uh, these Kirchhoff's laws down, they're going to be very important for you uh, to understand before you attempt your lab. Um, I'd like you to read these, read through these pages into your textbook, and do this one problem um, on page 450. All right. Once you get that that done, uh, check out the Google Classroom and see the lab that I've assigned. Um, it's again based on one of these simulations, but this one is on a different website called FET. And it's actually pretty cool because you get to assemble circuits in different ways. All right, so check that one out, and I'll see you next time.